car makers love naming their cars after animals, but every once in a while, a car company will name its son after a more unconventional beast. On this list, we're gonna talk about cars named after Mongolian weasels, cars named after extinct cattle, and even, bugs. This is the D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-
also, I would like to point out that for forever, Porsche didn't name any of their cars anything besides a bunch of numbers. And now they name everything uh, after a bunch of words that no one is quite sure how to say. McCann, McCann, I don't know. Cayman, Cayman, Cayenne, Cheyenne, Taycan, Toucan. Come on, guys. Let's get it together. AMC Marlin. Speaking of eating fish. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of eating fish, this next car is named after a big fish. I'm not talking about the Tim Burton movie. AMC, the car company, hasn't been around for a long time, and AMC, the movie theater company, doesn't look like they're going to be around for much longer either. And it might come as a surprise to some of you, including me, that AMC's flagship vehicle back in the glory days was a slick-looking fastback known as the Marlin. Named after a large fish in the Isteophoridae family. Known for its large dorsal fin and long spear-like snout. Is it a snout? Is it a fish beak? Nobody knows. They can't answer. The marlin happens to be one of the quickest fish in the sea, making it a pinnacle of offshore game fishing. I lived in Florida for a number of years when I was a, a child, and I would say nine out of 10 households have a marlin hanging in their living room. AMC sold this slippery sucker for a couple of years in the 60s with moderate success. It was roomy, luxurious, but so was the price tag. By the time other luxury personal cars entered the market like the Charger and the Thunderbird, the marlin really was a fish out of water, and it went belly up after about three years of production. Now, even though this misunderstood sea creature had a short life, it wasn't for naught, because decades later, its design nuances lived on in the Chrysler Crossfire. Fiat Panda. This next car is named after one of the most ferocious bears that was ever played by Jack Black. And by ferocious, I mean friendly. The panda bear, or giant panda, is a derpy little fella that lives in the mountain ranges of central China. And with a name like giant panda, you might expect it to tower over its enemies in terror. But I googled it, and these guys are only like four feet freaking tall, which is shorter than an actual Fiat Panda, and the Fiat Panda is a very, very small car. It debuted in 1980 and was designed by literal design god, Giorgetto Gigaro. We did an episode of the podcast on him, and I've always said it, if it ain't by GG, it ain't for me. This petite little lad is one of the brand's most successful cars despite never being sold in the US. It's a compact city car meant to be cheap, reliable, and robustly simple. In the 40 years that it's been around, Fiat has sold about 8 million pandas. And in case you were wondering, the latest census on giant pandas found less than 2,000 alive in the world. But those numbers are slowly going up, and the panda has officially been knocked off of the endangered species list. Congratulations, dudes. But that doesn't change the fact that they are not giant at all. So I've started a petition to rename the giant panda the regular panda. Triumph Stag. Visit a car show in America and you're gonna see a Mustang, guarantee it. Go to a car show in Japan, you're gonna see a couple of Skylines. Ain't no question about it. Go to a car show in the UK and you can bet your bottom knickers that you're gonna see a Triumph stack. This V8 powered four seater convertible was a competitor for the Mercedes SL and I'd be lying through my perfectly imperfect teeth if I told you it wasn't plagued with severe, severe mechanical issues. The V8 was actually a twin version of their pre-existing inline four and after nearly five years of developing this V8, Triumph couldn't figure out how to reliably use fuel injection so they resorted to carburetors instead. But the carbs didn't make enough power, oh, baby. So they widened the cylinder bores to get more displacement. Great idea, good job. Except the wider cylinders made less room for coolant passageways. So basically what I'm saying is they're inefficient and extremely, extremely prone to overheating and there's almost nothing you can do about it. Just like my uncle Douglas Lazy Mad Pumphrey. But when they're not broken, these things are honestly pretty sick. It's just a classic looking convertible. I mean, Sean Puffy Connery drove one in Diamonds Are Forever and he only drives the good cars. Anyway, a stag is an adult male deer. It's also slang for a single guy and stag brand canned chili is the most depressing name of a product ever. They might as well call it Lonely Man Goop Food. Moving on. Lamborghini Urus. The Lamborghini Machine Urus 
It's probably the best SUV that money can buy. And I do not say that lightly. I love SUVs. This boy's got 640 horsepower V8 and it kicks to 60 miles per hour in just 3.6 seconds. That's insane when you consider that it weighs 5,000 pounds. That's as much as a full small dumpster. Let me tell you, a luxury SUV from Lamborghini is exactly as nice as you would expect. Endlessly. Supple. Leather. Exquisitely accented trim. And of course, a fighter jet style pit because at the end of the day, it's a gosh darn Lamborghini machine. But it wouldn't be a glorious SUV without a glorious SUV name. And that's why they called it the Oosh. So it turns out, we talked about it a couple times, the folks over at Lamborghini are pretty freaking obsessed with bulls in a very, very weird way. So they decided to name this legendary family wagon after one of the best bulls of all time. The Oosh is an extinct species of wild cattle. And let me tell you guys, these boys were buff. You know how cows today are pretty big? Well, the Urus was nearly twice the size, clocking in at over 3,000 pounds. And they were also fast and aggressive, earning a place as one of the most legendary beasts to ever roam Europe or Asia. And I've been to Europe. I think it's a fitting name for Lamborghini's huge chiseled SUV. And if you want to learn more about other fast SUVs, make sure you're subscribed because next week, I'm gonna be talking about all the fastest SUVs ever made. TVR Vixen. TVR, or Trevcar, that's honestly what they're named after a guy named Trevor, is a British company known for their ludicrous, ridiculous limited run sports cars. These guys are literal mad scientists when it comes to making cars. Their formula is pretty simple. Lightweight body, big honking engine, bonkers name. From the Kerbera to the Chimera, TVR is pretty obsessed with deadly mythical creatures, but many moons ago in the 1960s, before they were naming cars after fire-breathing lion goats, TVR made a quaint little car called the Vixen. A Vixen is a female fox, the more you know. American car companies at the time were focused on massive luxury land yachts, but across the pond in England town, TVR was doing the exact opposite. This quick little lady fox had a minuscule fiberglass body mounted on a tube frame chassis. It only put out around 100 horsepower, sure, but just like a fox, it's not about sheer power. It's about being nimble. And nimble it was. Tipping the scales at 1,624 pounds. That's less than an empty, tiny dumpster. The coolest part was that TVR sent you the car completely disassembled. That's not the coolest part, that sucks. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll just do all the work. It's like the car Ikea. You wanna get in a fight with your significant other? Try and put a TVR Vixen together. Thanks, Trevor. Volkswagen t -Wong. Capping off this list is a car that really hits close to home for me. Partially because it's my daily driver and it's literally parked right in front of my home right now. I can... But also because it has the best name out of any car on this list and also of all time. And out of all the cars I've owned, it's honestly the best daily I've ever had. It's just a big old fat golf and I love it so much. When VW debuted this crossover in 2007, they held a contest to let the public vote on what it should be called, which is risky. Just ask David Attenborough and Bodie McBoatface. <laughs> Other names on the Tiguan ballot included Namib, Rockton, Liger, Salmon, and Nanook, but the public ultimately decided on Tiguan, and I'm damn glad they did, because I don't want to drive around in a car called Rockton. It sounds like a lacrosse player. Tiguan means Tiger Iguana. Super fitting for a vehicle that blends reptilian resilience with tiger-like agility. And just like its <laughs> name, the Tiguan is a view <laughs> of everything good VW has to offer. 200 hertz per turbo two liter, check. Six speed manual, check. 2200 pound tow capacity, check. I can pull my golf with my Tiguan. I love daily driving my little lizard cat. Got some KWV3s on there, got some 20 inch rotiforms, some Toyos, an APR stage one plus tune. There's cherry. Have not seen these yet, so. No. Boost creeps, hoodie. Who's that handsome boy? Man, what a good looking hoodie. We reworked the logo a little bit. Now it's in yellow, really pops against that black. We added an arm hitch so you can fly that donut flag. I'm gonna rock mine all fall. 
all winter. Go to DonutMedia.com and get you one. They're probably gonna sell out, so I would get it sooner than later. If you wanna learn more about TVR, check out this episode of Up to Speed. If you wanna know more about really, really dumb car names like Scrum Wagon, check out this episode of Wheelhouse. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Either subscribe to the channel or I will pee in your gas tank. I love you.